Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna be talking all about motivation and discipline. I got a comment on one of my recent videos asking for this, so I'm really excited to share this topic because if you don't already know, I read a lot of books and I love to read books about business. A lot of the business and self-help books that I read, they talk so much about motivation and discipline and how to achieve that in your life. Today, we're really gonna jump right into it. I have my laptop in front of me, so if I'm looking down over here, it's because I'm reading. This video is gonna be really catered to those of you that are working from home, working for yourself. You're trying to be an influencer. You're trying to be an OnlyFans creator. You're trying to be an entrepreneur. This video is for you, and I'm really excited to share some of the things that I've learned and hopefully you'll be able to take with you on your journey. I'm gonna start with motivation because I think you can't be disciplined if you have no motivation. Let's jump straight into discipline. Some people, it just, they just have it. They get up early in the morning, they go for a run, and they go to the gym. They just hit the day running. They know exactly what their plan is and they seem to just have endless energy. And that is my wife coming in and she is actually one of those people. Hi, Daisy. It seems like some people are just built with this type of motivation that I think we see these people and then we think, oh, that's just how they are. I'm never going to be able to be like that. But that is not the case. I think some of us, the reason why we don't have motivation just built in us is because of the stuff the negative self-talk that we might have. And I think that's the first thing that we need to address when it comes to motivation is the negative self-talk that tells us that we need to wait for the right moment, that you're never gonna be good. Those things are just negative thoughts. They are not reality and you're never going to get good or get better at something if you don't just start. There's never gonna be a right moment. You just have to start somewhere. So I think the first thing is replacing those negative thoughts. What I like to do and what's been working for me is whenever I do have a negative thought, I don't ignore it, I let it happen, and then I say something positive right after. So whenever I have a negative thought, I do a contradicting positive thought. So if I say, Ugh, I'm never gonna get this done, then right after that, I say, yesterday I got all of the things that I needed to get done, done. Maybe I can do it today. And then there we go. That's already now made me think positively about how much I can get done today. If we talk about those people that just seem like they naturally have motivation, it is because they built up that motivation, probably from a young age, and that's why it comes so easily to them as an adult. But you have to start small and you have to build the motivation. Motivation kind of spirals off of each other, and I'm sure you've felt this before where when you're doing really well in school or you're doing great at your job or you've been on your workout game, it makes you want to continue doing whatever you're doing. That's because motivation inspires more motivation and you keep building it up. It becomes easier as you get further along and you're able to see how far you've come. What you're gonna wanna do is start small. The key to motivation is building small habits that make it easier to do something bigger. So what I mean by that is, if you wanna go and work out in the morning and you just, for some reason, you every time you hit the snooze alarm, it's never gonna happen, you feel like, what you need to do is, one, don't make it at a certain time in the morning, Make it whenever it works for you, first of all. And then two, make it easy for you to work out. Lay out your clothes in the morning. Buy workout clothes that you really enjoy wearing so that you want to wake up and put them on in the morning. Maybe make it where you're only having to do one 10 minute workout video instead of going to the actual gym. Start small because the more you do it, like I said, the bigger the motivation is gonna get and the easier that motivation is gonna come. So start super, super small. If it's just putting on a cute workout outfit in the morning and doing a couple of squats, do that because then you'll be doing the squats and you'll think, this is kind of easy. Maybe I'll lift some weights too. Maybe I'll just walk over to the gym, who cares? Start small and work yourself up. The other thing you wanna do is add small new habits to your regularly scheduled routine. For an example, brushing your teeth in the morning, right after, if you know you wanna create content that day, you're brushing your teeth, do your makeup. A lot of the times I will wait to do my makeup till the middle of the day and so I've wasted half the day that I could have been creating content if I just wanna put my makeup on. So if you start making that a habit, right after I brush my teeth, I'm gonna put on my makeup. Then I will be photo ready for the day and it'll be easier to create content later. Say your normal routine in the morning is to make a coffee and then you sit down and you scroll through Instagram. Well, instead of 
scrolling through Instagram that already seems to be a habit, why don't you save content ideas that you really like and that you're inspired by? So it's already part of your routine. You kind of already are doing it and you just make it a habit to cater to your bigger goals. So you're having your coffee, you're scrolling and saving ideas and creating a mood board for what you're gonna shoot that day. As I said earlier, momentum is the biggest way that you're gonna find more motivation, but it is a balancing act. You also need to allow yourself those days where you just lay on the couch or you don't do as much and you can't be hard on yourself or not allow yourself to have a little break because if not, you will hit a wall and you will hit burnout. Allow yourself breaks, allow yourself to recover from a long week, allow yourself to turn off the phone at a certain hour of the day and spend time with your family and friends and allow yourself to go out in the middle of the day and get a coffee. Allow yourself small breaks throughout the day or throughout the week so that you don't end up stressed and overworked. Once you have all that lined up, another thing that you can do is surround yourself with people or content if there's not the right type of people around, uh, you know, sometimes you can't control that, people or content that inspires you, that motivates you, that makes you feel good when you see it or when you see them. I sometimes like to do kind of a refresh of who I'm following on social media because I want to be inspired by the people that I follow. I want to um, not just get entertainment, but also get the feeling that, okay, I am now inspired to work and to get things done. Something that is holding a lot of people back, especially in today's age, because it is so... You know, life is stressful, but stress is holding you back. Life is stressful, things get stressful, there's a lot to do, there's a lot to worry about, but at the end of the day, the stress is not gonna help you accomplish your goals and it isn't gonna allow you to feel motivation. But one thing you need to focus on, figure out what you can do to reduce your stress. Something that I like to do is reading. It really helps me reduce my stress. Something that Daisy likes to do is work out and run. It really helps her reduce stress. So find your thing that helps you reduce stress when things get hard. Take a little break, do the thing that makes you feel good, and reduce that stress. Talk to a therapist. Do whatever you need to do because the stress in your life is going to stop you and hold you back. The next thing is to not make tasks into chores. Make these tasks into something fun that you like to do. Obviously, we're talking about work here, but think about when you do the dishwasher or you're cleaning your house. I'm sure a lot of us know by now that if you put on some music and like sing along while you're cleaning, it's gonna help get that task done without it feeling like a chore. You gotta do something similar with your work. For me, I really love what I do. So it doesn't always feel like a chore, but there are times when it does. And what I have to do is one, reevaluate what I'm doing, um, and two, find ways to make it fun. So something for me that does feel like a task a lot of the time is taking content. And I think what I have to do to get myself in the mood to do that is put on music or put on a, get a cute new outfit so that I want to take photos. Try a new makeup look. Just do something that changes up the routine and makes me have fun with it. I also enjoy finding inspiration because then I get excited about cre recreating um, whatever I'm inspired by. Whereas if I'm just making stuff, no inspiration, sometimes it becomes a bit like a chore. Like I'm doing the same thing over and over again. So find ways to get creative and that will inspire you to want to do it and make it not feel so much like a chore. The last thing in the motivation section is to build routines that work for you. This is going to lead me into the next topic, which is discipline. Motivation is not motivation. Motivation is discipline. And you have to plan your tasks around when motivation is low and you do that by being so disciplined that it doesn't matter how you feel that day, if you feel bad, you do it anyway because you've built discipline and you've built a habit instead of a motivation that lasts for two weeks and fizzles. As Daisy says, motivation doesn't come from within because sometimes you're not going to have that motivation. You're going to wake up and you're not going to want to do what you have to do, but it comes with discipline to decide even when you aren't motivated to do what you have to do which is why building a routine is going to be so important and that's why we talked about those small habits and i also want to talk about scheduling building a routine that works for you because i have a life that's fluctuating all the time daisy goes on tour we travel a lot we're not always home a routine that sticks to you know a nine to five every single monday through friday 
doesn't always work for me. I do like to do that when I am here, but it doesn't always work for my, my lifestyle. So you have to find a routine that works for you. Both discipline and motivation grow when you're also rewarding yourself. When you can see the growth and progress that you've made at, towards your goal, it gets easier to continue to make progress. It's like a treat to see how far you've come. So what you're gonna wanna do is treat yourself, whether that's big or small. You wanna reward yourself for big accomplishments and small accomplishments. It'll keep pushing you to strive for more. So something that I like to do is treat myself with a coffee or a latte or take Daisy out for a special dinner on Friday nights if I have accomplished everything I need to throughout the week. And having that to look forward to is what's gonna keep pushing you. So you can do things like that or you can do smaller ones like if I shoot a week's worth of content and get that scheduled out, then I can go get my nails done, something small, or I can go get a boba, whatever it is. There are other ways to reward yourself that are completely free as well. You can hit that check mark and go, woohoo! I don't know, sometimes those type of things like make me feel excited. There are certain things that I actually like woohoo about. Like I'll be like, yes, woo, Daisy, look what just happened. And I have like done something that I feel accomplished about. And I think even those little moments of celebration just help me want to do it all over again so I can celebrate again. Something else that I think about when it comes to discipline is sort of like what Daisy was saying. It's like you wake up and maybe you don't have the motivation that day. You're not feeling it. But if I ever get in that headspace, I think to my head, whatever task it is that I need to do, I imagine myself doing it. And I'm like, it's really not that hard. Even though I don't want to do it, it's not that hard. I'm just going to do it. So if I'm like, I don't want to read emails, I don't want to answer, you know, the 150 emails that I have. I sit there, I think about me answering emails and how easy it is to just type things up. I don't have to speak, I don't have to do anything. It becomes so much easier in my brain. And I'm like, I don't even need to be motivated to do that. That is so easy. And then I can go and do it. Same thing with the gym even. I will sit there in bed, laying there like, I don't want to go. And then I'll stop and think, okay, I'm gonna put my leggings on. I'm gonna walk over there with my water. I'm just gonna walk on the treadmill, lift a little weight. I'm like, that is so easy. Why wouldn't I do that? Not motivated today, don't wanna do it, but it's so easy. When you think about a task, it becomes so much easier than what your brain originally is thinking that it will be. But you have to think about each action. To do that, you really have to think about each action. Like I'm putting on my leggings, I'm walking on the treadmill. Like then you realize how easy it is. But if you just think, oh, I have to go to the gym and you're thinking about the gym, it seems so difficult. Or when you're thinking about getting content done, you're like, oh, I gotta put the camera out, I gotta do this and that. If you're thinking about it like that, it seems chaotic. But if you think, okay, I'm gonna get the camera, I'm gonna put it on the tripod, turn it, hit the button. It's super easy. It's too easy, why wouldn't I do it? So imagine taking action. It's important and it will help. As I said many times, start small and put reminders or alerts in places that you can see them and that you're going to be reminded often. So sometimes phone alerts don't really work because we have so many phone alerts on our phone. If you don't have that many alerts, then they might, it might work for you. But I think that we're so accustomed to just hitting the snooze or hitting like, not now, on our phones. So there has, there are other ways to put an alert right in front of your face. You can set timers, you can stick sticky notes to your laptop, you can put a note on the fridge, you can leave things out, which is kind of a reminder. Like I said, like the night before, you can leave your workout clothes out. The night before, you can leave your journal on your bedside table. The night before, you can set up your laptop with the screen already open, and maybe it's not on, but it's open, your mouse is next to it, your notepad is open, your calendar is open, whatever it is. You can kind of leave yourself clues. You can leave yourself clues of what you need to do. And that is going to help you be disciplined because you're gonna open up your laptop and then the calendar is just gonna be open and it's gonna have your schedule for the day. You're like, okay, well, I didn't, I didn't, you know, go open the internet first because the calendar is already there. Giving yourself alerts and messages and clues of what you need to do. Even if it's a sticky note on your mirror that says, get ready, get ready. So you don't have to do it later. The next thing is harder because it does have to do with other people. But if you have the ability, I would recommend having someone hold you accountable. It helps. And sometimes your friends or family 
don't hold you accountable, they don't get it, or you don't even tell them about whatever you're doing. But there are ways that you can still get held accountable. You can get a mentor or a coach. You can make friends on the internet that will hold you accountable. You can ask your partner to hold you accountable. What holds me accountable? Definitely Daisy. And then also making content like this, it holds me accountable because you guys in the comments are holding me accountable. Like, hey, I want a video of this. I wanna see this. Let's do this. Having people in your life hold you accountable is going to help you. Now, you can't rely on this, but if you have the ability to pay someone like a mentor or coach or you have a friend or family member or a partner that can hold you accountable, tell them, please hold me accountable with this. I really want to do this. The next one is also a bit hard. Limit your temptations and distractions. For so many of us, it's so easy to say no to things that we passionately disagree with, but it's so hard to say no to things that distract us and limit us. It's so hard to say no to things that we like and enjoy that we don't really need or want in our lives, but we still like them. Use your ability to say no in situations. I have turned off all of my notifications on my phone. I don't get notifications on my phone because they are distracting me when I'm working, when I'm taking content, when I'm with friends and family, they are a distraction to me. So I've turned off my notifications. So if I don't text you back for a month, that is why. <laughs> um, but honestly, that is why. I don't like to have the distraction. Another thing is drinking and going out a lot is a distraction for me. I've recently done two things that have helped me with this. I've decided I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm too old to care and I choose to say no to things that I don't wanna do so that I have more time to do the things I wanna do, like work and make money. And I also, this one you probably can't do, I feel like most people can't do this, but I don't have a car anymore, which makes it nearly impossible to get anywhere because I live so far away from people that getting around is just, I mean, I can get around in the area I live, but to go anywhere else, it's so hard. So for me, Doing those two things limited a lot of my distractions. Two, but three, also the phone, has limited a lot of my distractions. If you can't get rid of your car, you're just gonna have to learn how to say no to a lot of things. I recently have been able to say no to a lot more things. I think mostly because I just chose to stop caring what anyone else thinks. I will simply just say, I don't wanna do something, I can't do it, and that's that. I don't even give excuses anymore. I just don't want to or I can't. I don't justify it. I don't say, oh, I can't do that because this and this or I don't wanna do that because this and this. I just say, oh, I can't, I don't wanna do that. Figure out how to say no to your distractions. Figure out how to turn off your notifications in your life, whether that's alerts on your phone or notifications and distractions from friends and family or from your own home if you're working from home and there's you know you want to do the dishes you want to do that set yourself a timer okay i'll do the dishes for five minutes and then i'm coming straight back make sure that those distractions are limited the next thing is huge it's really really important have a plan don't go into a task blindly it will feel overwhelming have a plan for everything you do i think that's one thing that i teach my students in my mentorship program is i i outline the course here's what you need to focus on this week just do this part of it don't get ahead of yourself have a plan a step-by-step -step plan of action and everything will seem easy if you don't know where to start with something find help find a youtube video Find whatever it is so that you can take step-by-step -step action towards whatever goal you have. This one's hard for a lot of people. Forgive yourself and move on from cheat days. If you need to lay for 24 hours on the couch, which I do quite often, I will say I do that once a week and I need it to stay motivated and stay disciplined with my job. I need a full 24 hours to lay every single week. So again, I plan for that and I also allow that. I don't get upset with myself. I know that that is my day to recover, recharge, and re-energize for the next day and for the rest of the week. When you have a cheat day, a cheat day, that's what we're calling it, accept it for what it is and start again the next day. Don't dwell. And that goes with 
creating a sustainable schedule for yourself. Like I said, sometimes my weeks are unpredictable and I can't work a normal nine to five schedule. But for the most part, I've set myself up so that Monday through Fridays, I am working like a normal person because I feel like the rest of the world works like that. So I might as well just stay on the same schedule as like my friends and family so I can see them on the weekends. And then for weeks where maybe we're traveling or whatever, then I plan and I schedule ahead. I make sure that, okay, during this trip, when am I going to have time to work? When am I going to have time to do this or that? And I get that in there. Create a sustainable schedule for you. I work Monday through Friday, but once every, once a week, mainly on either Tuesdays or Thursdays, I kind of have a chill day where I'm laying on the couch. Sometimes I'll still work from my laptop, but it's more of a chill, relaxed day. I watch TV and give myself a little alone time because I know the weekends I like to spend with my wife and friends and stuff like that. That's the schedule that is that works for me and is sustainable. I also have a schedule for how I make content. I like to batch bundle OF content. I like to do, you know, six to eight days worth of content in one day. I like to make my YouTube videos and edit them within two days. So I have kind of a routine and a schedule for that. So find a routine, find a schedule that works for you. And the last thing is don't overwhelm yourself with a list of to do's. Make a list of three to six tasks every day, three to six. That's it. Nothing more. List them from most challenging to least challenging and get them done to its completion before moving on to the next one. So if you have, th let's say we have three different tasks we have to do. We need to make and edit a YouTube video. We need to take OnlyFans content and we also need to do emails. The easiest one is probably gonna be emails. That one's gonna be last on the list. The hardest one is probably going to be making and editing a YouTube video. So that's gonna be first. Then we're doing some OnlyFans content and then last is doing those emails. If you do the emails first, you might lag all day and you're gonna, the sun's gonna go down by the time you end up creating a YouTube video or creating some OnlyFans content. So have a list of the most important things that you need to do that day and put them in order of importance and make sure you complete it before you move on to the next one. I like to time block my life. So every week I actually um, have a calendar where I literally plan every hour of the day. This is what my time blocking looks like for the week. I plan my days out this way because it helps me stay organized. It helps me, like I said, when I open my laptop, my schedule for the day is there. I plan it the day before or on Mondays. I might plan like a few things throughout the week and it just helps me really understand what I need to get done. And then it also helps me organize from order of importance. So early in the day, I'll get this done and then later and later. It also shows me how much time I have for a certain project or task because I think a lot of times if we don't have a certain amount of time allotted to it, we will take longer than is actually necessary. Where if you're like, okay, I only have an hour for this, you will more than likely get it done. You can do anything in an hour. That is the video. I hope it was helpful, informative. And if you guys want another video on how I time block my calendar, or if you want another video on like a literal day in my life, like how I work through my all my projects, please let me know. And yeah, I hope it was helpful. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.